official title is AV coordinator? Um, actually, I've been going by just been logistics coordinator. coordinator. Yeah. 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 That's a little broader term, I guess, logistics. Okay. We are now joined by Peter Eshright, PGS. E S C H on Twitter. You said you were a late adopter of Twitter. How late are we talking? Uh, we're we're talking within the last month or two. Yeah, I think I've made it up to to maybe a whole ten uh, tweets at this point. Oh man, <laughs> we we gotta I, gotta work on that. I'll be in the teens after the conference is over, though. Have you tweeted anything today? I haven't. Do you tweet from a mobile device? You know, I don't. I don't have a tweet compatible mobile device yet. Yeah, you do. Sure. What's he use? Well, okay, I could SMS it, right? Message. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I just, I just need to learn how to use it. I'm too lazy to text message things yeah. to my Twitter. I like text message people when, when I'm getting my hair done and I can't answer because my hairdresser will smack me. Right, yeah. That has nothing to do with the conference, though. <laughs> so uh, technically, according to this piece of paper, you are the OS Bridge AV coordinator, but I have to say that anytime anyone attempts to coordinate anything, we talk to Peter. So what are you? It does happen a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. What are you doing for the? Well, I would say I would say I'm doing logistics for the conference. I have uh, I handled the getting the AV contracts arranged and making sure that we had all the services on site that we needed. And I've also handled the room setups and um, just a lot of the aspects of making sure that you know when people came to the actual conference site that we had the equipment and the rooms the way they need them to be so that they could have their presentations, you know, with um, the projectors and the screens and the seating and everything, which, you know, I mean, it's easy to take it for granted. I, I honestly thought it would take me a lot less time to put all the ends together than mm -hmm. what it ended up doing, but I think it's been a really good experience. I've learned a lot and I've gotten to work with a lot of really interesting, great people uh, in the process, just finding out what their expectations were and what their needs were. You've done a bang it job because every room I've been in, it, it's put together, it's ready to go. People seem to have what they need. Everything's in place. Our room is set up. <laughs> we've managed to get you every time we've needed something. It's been, um, Peter, hey, Peter, hey, Peter, until we get here. And then we just call Mitch for everything. But um, how is it going? Everything running according to plan? Is everything going smoothly? I'd say things, things are going very well. Um, you know, being this is my first time working on a conference of this or an event of this scope. I have sort of um, some background in food and beverage, and I've done smaller events there, but um, you know, more, more like a single room banquet type of event. I've also done um, some technical theater work, mm -hmm. so I really drew on those skills to put this together. And I think that I've had um, the fortune of working with some very good people, some uh, excellent professionals to uh, fulfill our audiovisual needs and some of our the other aspects and that has really you know kind of helped out um, where my weaknesses were and I've been able to kind of to take on the other side of figuring out how we need to meet um, the technical needs and the expectations of our speakers and the conference attendees because um, a lot of these things that we're going to do here are new as far as um, conferences go, unconferences, for example, are sort of atypical, especially doing a large scale one in uh, multiple rooms at a convention center. That's a fairly new idea. And I think that getting the pieces um, together f to make sure that we could do both uh, your classic presentation and then also you reuse those same spaces in an unconference format um, has been one of the one of the s spots where there have been the most questions that have come up but I think that we've really gone to the point where that's going to go great on Friday and I'm very excited I think that everyone else here is um, about that Hearing a lot of excitement about Friday but today and tomorrow are pretty much status quo the rooms are all being used for the same things for two days Right, yeah. How are you guys going to use uh, the ballroom on Friday? Is that still going to be used for for the non uh, for the unconference sessions? Mm -hmm. It's um it's not going to be used so much for the sessions unless we need it as an extra space. Um, but definitely for the kickoff, the plan is to do the kickoff there, and we're also going to do our end notes. Um, you know, which is kind of something I think 
people probably will, will want to run away from and I really say no so, um, come back and stay you know this is our opportunity to to thank all the attendees for uh, their contributions you know uh, most people I think come to a conference expecting that it, you know it's a show you're going to pay for or at least you know in a, in a classical sense yeah. and um, you know really here we're asking people not not to come and just enjoy the production we're putting on but to actually come and be the production that we're putting on uh, especially in the unconference on Friday and so you know for that reason I think people should stay around because that's really our time to say thank you to all of those attendees that have come and participated in the conference in that way what time is the end note on Friday I believe it's at four o'clock it's definitely on the schedule okay on the paper. I have it next to me. I'm not going to pick it up right now. Um, have you had the chance? What I noticed earlier, what I expected to see when I left the room was to see everyone with a green ribbon running around like a chicken with their head cut off, making sure that everything was going as it should be. And what I saw was kind of sauntering and walking around and everyone taking deep breaths and looking very at ease. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed because this is a completely volunteer run conference. That's true, it is. It seems to just be <laughs> So, yeah, so I guess there is sort of the, the question of, you know, like what, what's the magic that allows um, a volunteer run conference to run smoothly? And, you know, the, the answer is actually that there's not really magic um, behind it. What, what there is, is instead of putting all those problems here today at the conference, we started two months ago and took on each one of those problems one at a time so that when we got here it would run smoothly. And I think that if you were to look back um, at the last couple months, it's really been a lot more hectic than today has been. But the reason for that is that we wanted today to be very smooth and so that people could come here and enjoy the content of the conference because that's what what we're trying to do. You know, I think that um, in software, you know, we always, the, the focus there is to remove the bugs and to make a good quality product that you can hand off to people and they can use it. And that's also what the open source community here in town is trying to do with this conference. We're trying to make a professional quality product that people can use. And I hope that people really who've attended the conference uh, get that experience and um, take that away with them. Before you go, if you had one piece of advice for attendees of the conference, what would it be? What should they keep in mind? I think probably, probably the the biggest piece of advice is, uh, you know, that this is this time is valuable. Uh, you know, we don't usually get this many people with this much expertise together in one spot. You know, maybe a couple times a year, it's something that we can pull off. And so, I would say participate in all of the social aspects of the conference mm -hmm. so that you really get the full benefit of that. You know, we're going to do our best to make the, the, um, the content of the conference available to people after it's over through podcasts as well as some video capturing that we've done um, because we believe that that's a really valuable information resource. But at the same time, um, the, the resource that we can't put on the online for you later is the social experience of actually being here. So, you know, come to the unconference, go to the BOFs after hours, go to the hacker lounge, you know, really get involved with other people who have expertise in the areas you're interested in. I think that very nicely mirrors uh, what Selena said in the keynote this morning when she had her uh, meet your neighbor time. Right, yeah. And that does seem to be like the really important key aspect. You can sit in a room and listen to someone talk all you want to, but you also have the opportunity to talk to people and to reach out and to find out what it is that they know and to share what you know. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining Great. us. I know you're a busy guy. Um, it was really good to talk to you. Thank you. Please stop by and sign the guest board on your way. Oh, all right. Oh, right. well. Thank you, Peter.